Hey everyone, welcome to another MLM dumpster fire. Today we're back for another top MLM fails video. And today we're gonna have our boy John again. I'm so sorry, I went to his YouTube channel and I just downloaded a few of his videos. I thought the topics were interesting and I just wanted to come. I know he's a little bit of douchey in my opinion and I think a lot of you would agree with that opinion. And then we have two more clips from Eric Ward's podcast with Charlene. Charlene, the lady from Beachbody, apparently. I didn't know that she was in Beachbody, but yeah, somebody in the comment section told me on the video that I did reacted to a full podcast episode where she was a guest or he was a guest in her. I, I don't know, but you guys have let me know that she was actually in Beachbody years ago. So thank you for that. And I, excuse me, um, but it's like 39 degrees Celsius, which is, I know, I know I'm ready this time. It is 102 Fahrenheit. So they're saying tomorrow is going to be 40 degrees, so 104 Fahrenheit. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. That's a nice free way to support my channel if you would like. And as always, big shout out to my channel members. Thank you guys for being here and let's just get into this. Let's start with our boy, John. I want to show you what it takes, what you need to do, what you need to commit to if you're wanting to get to a six figure income. Now, let's keep it real. You ain't going to do it this week, this month. Most of you are never going to make a six figure figure income. Most people don't have the work ethic. They don't have the desire. Everybody wants to be super successful, live a happy, healthy life. Everybody wants these things, but there are certain choices that you have to make. We all have challenges. We all have situations. You know what I'm saying? Some of you, you've never done anything like this before. Some of you have a fear of public speaking. I used to have that, by the way. I used to be terrified of public speaking. Scared money don't make money. Most people are not gonna do what I'm about to tell you. So before you get comparitis and you go, oh, that's discouraging. I want you to get encouraged. I was in network marketing 14 years and I had built my credibility. I had built reputation. I had built relationships. I had you know, built multiple businesses successfully before joining the company I'm with now. So of course I had a lot more influence when I got started. But with that being said, I recruited 38 people my first month. We did over 100,000 in volume the first month. I made over 17,000 the first month. Let's keep it real. I had a lot of influence after 14 years. I better be able to recruit 38 people does that make sense? So I'm just giving you an example of what's possible. I've also had other people get to six figures. I've seen people do it in 60 days, 90 days, but it's going to take an all out effort. You can't dabble. There's too many dabs. But you just said that you were successful. You recruited that many people because you had influence. So what do you mean? If people don't have influence, then they can't do what you did because they don't have influence. They have to either build up their influence somehow. This is not helpful. You're trying to say I'm, sp I'm different because I had influence and I had people to recruit when I switched companies or whatever. And that's just not useful to people who don't have influence. Like, what are they supposed to do? This, what are you talking about, John? Like, this is not gonna be helpful to them. Work hard, what? No. Dabblers in network marketing. There's too many people that are just, they're toying with this thing. And you see them go from company to company, three years, five years, 10 years goes by, they have no residual, they keep starting all over because for some reason they think when things get hard, that means I should start all over. Do you have to make moves sometimes? Of course. I'm not gonna stay somewhere I don't believe in the company. The point is, it's supposed to be hard to get to six figures. That's why I'd rather tell you the truth. Most people will never get there because listen, it's hard to get there. It's even harder to stay there, but is it possible? Obviously, but here's the truth. The truth is it's a numbers game. I know I always say you don't wanna have commission breath. You don't wanna treat people like a number, but it is a numbers game. How do you think I signed up 38 people my first month? There's no way I could have signed up 38 people my first month if I talked to five. If I talked to 55, I could not. But you just said you, you had influence. So it's still, it's easier for you to recruit people that you talk to comparing to someone who doesn't have influence and is not already successful in network marketing. That's still, it's not relatable, John. You're not being relatable. Not sign up 38. Nobody's gonna have a close ratio that good. So I had to talk to hundreds of people. I had hundreds of people say no. So here would be the numbers. You wanna write down the numbers? Here's probably what it's gonna take. ATMing 300 people a month. You're gonna to have to expose at least 300 people a month for about three months. Do you even track your numbers? 
because the fortune is in the follow-up. If you were able to get to six figures with less exp- Have to talk to 300 people a month, 300 new different people a month. That is ridiculous. Imagine people who have jobs, like full-time jobs, part-time jobs, who have kids at home, who have other responsibilities and a life, having to talk to 300 people for three months. That's 900 people. Where the hell are you supposed to find 900 people? I'm sorry, maybe, maybe I have an attitude today. It is so fucking more. Also, I got this. I got a calendar for my friend when I was leaving Ireland or like cats. This is so cute. I'm sorry. This is probably uh, annoying to some people. The fact that I'm going to do this throughout the whole video, but I can't. I, I don't have air conditioning here. My room is closed. I, I'm not alone in the house. So this is what we have to deal with today and probably next week. This whole week and next week because I'm recording all the videos within like two days. Exposure with less people. Cool. Let's see what you're doing in a year or two. I don't care how quickly your business grows your first 90 days. Anybody can explode in their first 90 days, six months, first year. Cool. Awesome. Wow. Good for you. Are you still there two years from now? Are you still there three, four, five, six years from now? This is why you need a system because you don't want your business to be hype dependent. You want it to be system dependent. System stands for save yourself time, energy, and money. By the way, is your team winning? Doesn't matter how much money I make. If I make a million a month when my team is broke, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in me making lots of money if my team isn't winning. But this is going to be what it takes. You got John, how many people in your downline are successful? How many of them are making money? This is so annoying when they say these things because the majority of people in network marketing, not just John's company, Modair, by the way, the majority of people never make any profit. John here earns money based off of his team's hard work and effort. Every sale or recruit that they do he earns money off of that. He benefits from that. His own and his team's. And he's the one that earns all the money and the majority of people in his team are not winning. They're not earning. They're not profiting. They might be getting paychecks, but they're not profiting. I'm going to link the income disclosure statement in the description box below. You can take a look at it yourself. There are articles from the FTC. I could say more, but I think I'm going to be rude. So I'm just going to let him talk. But I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. I get buck wild. You got to be ATMing 10 people a day. If you're like, I don't even ATM 10 people a week. Great. You're not going to be at a six figure income anytime soon. Not even close. Plus, here's the truth. Your close ratio sucks when you're new. You don't have posture. You don't have belief. You struggle with what to say, what to do. This is why we encourage people doing group chats. Every single business prospect, I put them in a group chat so they can meet other leaders for two reasons. One, I want them to get inspired and hear other people's stories and get their questions answered. But number two, they're seeing the system in action. So every single business prospect, I add them into the product group. I add them into the opportunity group. I have them watch one 20 minute video. If they can't give me 20 minutes, why would I give them 20 minutes to help them change their life for the better. You should have a video that's inside of your group that people can tag people in all day, every day. And then the people that are interested in the opportunity, you should be putting every single one of them in a group chat and I don't ask for permission. I just tell them this is the next step. So how do I know I have someone I can work with? They're introducing me to people. If they're not introducing me to people, there's no way they're getting to a six figure income. If they're not putting their business prospects in chats, how are they going to earn and learn? They're not going to learn or earn. Does that make sense? I've had people, they came in guns blazing and they were ATMing 10 to 20 people a day. They got to five figures per month in income within 90 days doing this. So at any given time, you could turn it on and go buck wild. You really want to, by the way, look for people that have WIP, W-H-I-P. People that have a work ethic, hunger, integrity. If they have personal power, now we're talking. Now, are you going to recruit people who don't have personal power? Yeah. Would you rather recruit John when he was 20, when I first got started in network marketing? Would you rather recruit John when he was 30 and had 10 years of experience or John at 43 right now? When would you rather recruit me? Obviously, you'd rather recruit me now. I was a hot mess express. I was a disaster. I was broke, busted, and disgusted. But guess what I had? Work ethic, and I was hungry. I had no confidence. 
Guess how you build. I'm just gonna say this. I mean, I always say this, but it doesn't matter how hungry you are and how good your work ethic, good or bad is, you're still not gonna profit in an MLM because the majority of people are set up to fail. It's just a business model. The business model is flawed. That's the way it works. You are not gonna be successful regardless. So the fact that he's saying all of this, not applicable to an MLM. Confidence through courageous action. People say, I suck at doing videos. How many have you done? I suck at prospecting. I suck at follow-up. First of all, zip it. Of course you suck at something you haven't done a whole lot of. It's like anything else. You're not consistent. You worry so much about what people think. You don't post. You're not showing up. You're not showing up for you. And this is the biggest issue, right? This is why people ride that emotional roller coaster so much. The key to success, keep the bar down. Have long-term vision. I'm sorry, getting rich is hard. It's way harder to stay rich. But guess what? It's also, on the flip side, worth it. In order to grow your business and grow your bank account, you got to grow you first. That's why the mindset is such a big deal. And the only way to develop the confidence is through consistency, through courageous action. Oh my God, thank God that's over. That was the longest six minutes and 40 seconds because I'm so cranky. Wow, I'm so, it's so hot. Zip it. He said zip it. I mean, if you're a grown adult who's supposed to be a leader and have his downline and train people and you say zip it and you talk to them in that way, it's absolutely disgusting and it's, it's not normal. That's all I'm going to say about that. Let's just move on to the next one. This next clip is from... Charling. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I forgot how you spell it, but this one is called Focus on One Thing. When did you find your path? Um, you know, being raised by an entrepreneur, my dad had a million different businesses. So I was not afraid to fail. And I also thought that was kind of what you did. You just looked for the new opportunity. He often had a few things going at once. So that's what I learned and that's what I did. I always had four or five side hustles going at the same time. So uh, I started a business called the All Michigan Auto Swap Meet. I uh, was selling knives door to door. I was working as a waitress. Uh, I was buying wholesale jewelry in downtown Detroit and doing- Surely selling knives is, what's the name of that? Cutco, right? Little home jewelry parties, just me, because uh, gold was like the thing then. So I was lots, doing lots of different things. I was teaching fitness classes. This is in your 20s? Yeah. Okay. Teaching fitness classes. I was also a personal trainer and tried to start a personal training franchise. Like, yeah, you know, I was doing all of the things and I liked all of the things. And when I... You know, I'm a little bit confused by her story now because in the full episode of the podcast that we watched, she said the way she started doing those videos for Beachbody, I presume, the workout videos was by accident and she didn't know what the hell she was doing. But now she's saying that she was a personal trainer and she was trying to get that going for her. So I'm confused. If you were a personal trainer, how did you not know what you were doing when you were making up a workout, when you were coming up with a workout video? Well, that's interesting how the stories just keep changing, not just hers, but in general. A lot of MLM leaders change their story every time they tell it, like from rags to riches story. First got pregnant, I was like, okay, I want to teach other women how to start a business so that they can stay home with their kids. So I made up flyers and hand, handed them out to people because there was no social media and tried to promote this uh, workshop that I was going to do in a hotel, get a big hotel room, conference room, which I rented. And like five people showed up. I was doing all of these things. And I felt, I thought that I was making the most money I could because I was doing so many things, but I didn't have any room to do anything more. And the only thing that was working was like me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I was just so much grind. Solopreneur. Yeah. And in so many different areas, I felt so uh, like a chicken with its head cut off. And I, I, I thought there's no way I can sustain this and keep going. And why isn't something popping for me? I, heard some advice from someone who wasn't even a mentor to me. It was actually, it was, I listened to a radio program and they just told the story about how important it is to just focus on one thing. And I thought that was such a dramatic edit. <laughs> what? If I did, wouldn't I, wouldn't I be cutting off my nose to spite my face? Aren't I going to make less money? 
But everyone who's successful says that. Everyone without exception. So why do I think I'm the exception? I'm going to double down on one of these things. And um, I looked at the financial opportunities of the, all the things I was doing at that time. I needed money. And I realized that the opportunity, even though I was like really passionate about helping women in their businesses, it just wasn't the right opportunity for me. So I doubled down on fitness. And that's when, that, that was the first year I made a million dollars. So she just doubled down, focused on one thing only, and she made a million dollars within the first year of doing that. Yeah, that's totally realistic. Let's watch the last one. This one is called Your Customer's Stories Are Important. What happened is all the instructors who were teaching their classes would send me these incredible before and after photos of their mm. students. I would get these images and these photos and read their stories and I would print them out. They would email them to me. And I would print them out and I had this binder that I would put them in because it would motivate me every time I was creating new choreography to remember I wasn't just creating it for the girl in the front row with ripped abs. I was creating it for that person who stepped into the back row who wanted to be in the front row and who had 75 or 100 pounds to lose. So I was always thinking about like, how can I make this choreography work for them too? And I just kept this book and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when all these infomercial companies started reaching out to us, I was like, okay, who's the agent or the attorney that negotiates all these? I found him and he had negotiated, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Norris. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Yeah, sure. he had a long-standing fitness infomercial. And I'm like, oh, he negotiated that deal. And he had negotiated some of Tony Robbins' infomercial deals. So I hired that guy. And went, and he just gave me the runaround when I called him and told my, he goes, yeah, everyone thinks they have a fitness program. Everybody thinks blah, blah, blah. You know, you want to spend my hourly rate, come on in and I'll listen to you. I came in with that book and I put it down the table and he went, are you kidding me? I said, yeah, he goes, who knows you have this book? I said, I, I don't think anyone. He's like, okay, I'll take it from here. And literally, I didn't realize it, but that book was worth millions. Sure. Because typically with a fitness infomercial, it takes about a year to capture before and afters. Mm -hmm. I already had them mm. and they were real mm. and they were powerful. Mm. Yeah. Love it. Right. So definitely Beachbody. That setup reminds me of Insanity. I mean, the only workouts that I did from Beachbody were Insanity. And I did that. What was it called? Turbo Fire or Turbo something. I don't think that was her. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. But I always say this. I messed up my knees so bad doing Beachbody. And I was trying to modify. But even the modified version of the exercises in Insanity, Beachbody Insanity program, Shanti program were they were too advanced for a total beginner who knows nothing what they're doing I didn't have any extra weight I was quite skinny actually when I started I think that was high school or beginning of college I destroyed my knees I found what works for me and what exercises I can do and can't do like lunges I never do lunges because I just can't my knees can't take them even when I do them perfect perfect form, everything. I just can't do lunges. So things like that. I know what I can do and what I can't do now, but yeah, I was really young and I, I blame Beachbody for, well, Beachbody, I didn't know what I was doing. I should have gotten a personal trainer, but it wasn't really a thing in Croatia at that age and time. Anywho, I'm going to wrap that one up here. Let me know down below if you tried her program. Let me know down below if you tried any Beachbody uh, programs or workouts before and if you got any injuries yourself from doing Beachbody. I know this was a short one, but it's so hot. I just, I can't, I can't think. My brain's not working and John, really pissed me off. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. That's nice for you to support my channel if you would like. And as always, big shout out to all my channel members. Thank you guys for being here and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.